Uh-oh. Hey, everybody. Uh-oh. Morning. So hey, uh, we're going to check. Allison's going to check our um, our camera right now and get us right back, back in, uh, in focus there. Hey, fuzzy. No, maybe not so bad. Hey. So, uh, hey, go. guys. Oh. Yeah, it's Sorry okay. Sorry about that. Little technical issue. Not that big of a deal. <laughs> like, like, um, yeah. One day we'll have a cameraman or a camera person. Maybe yeah, right. Take over. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Let's Good start morning. over. Happy um, Saturday. Happy Saturday. How is everybody? Coffee, Cheers. Coffee, tea. Cheers. I know. Got my right. tea. I have tea. Coffee. Coffee. So, yeah. Um, yeah. How are you guys doing? Mm. How was your week? Um, we were just commenting that we can't believe we're, we're up here again going live because we feel yep. like we were just here. It's June 12th, Saturday. Um, yeah. I'm Sean. This is Allison. We're Hi. Spoken Garden. If you Hi, don't everybody. know, you've never been here before. And so, uh, yeah. So uh, we're here to just chat about gardening. Um, today's topic, real quick, is uh, shade-loving container garden plants. Yeah, this is going to be a fun topic. Yeah, and how to design with them, some ideas. It's going to be fun. We're, yeah, and we're really excited to talk to you about specific plants that can fit yeah. into different categories. So, um, yeah, we're going to get into that a little bit later and talk about just foliage and flowering plants. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, some, lots of options. Some really fun on herbs. Yeah, yeah, we've got a whole bunch of sensory, whole bunch of things to show you later. So, <laughs> yeah, you guys, what's going on? Um, go ahead and let us know if you're here. It looks like um, quite a few of you have jumped on. So, yeah. we hope you had a great week. Um, some of you yeah. are probably having some major heat right now. Oh, and some yeah. of you maybe have some not so seasonal type of weather. So it's been a little crazy out there. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully you've had a great week, like Allison said, and uh, you're ready to get your. Your, uh, your weekend started and maybe jump into a few gardening projects. Yeah, definitely. Good yep. morning to Rosie. Rosie oh. Thurman. Hi. Morning, Rosie. How are you, Rosie? Rosie, I forget where you're, um, what zone you live in. So we're just curious. Let us know. Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. Um, we're in zone 8B. Zone yep. So just throwing that out there. I know. It's coming yeah. into summer. The weather's pretty nice today. We've had yeah. some rain, but that's not atypical in our area in the no. Pacific Northwest. So. No. Um, yeah, we're just happy to be here with you guys and I'm um, just curious what's going on out there and Hi guys. so as usual we're going to start with some garden um, question and answers or questions that came in from YouTube in the past week. Mm -hmm. So we've got some really good questions. We do, we do. Oh hey, um, Rhonda, Rhonda Testa? Hi Rhonda. Hey Rhonda. Oh Morning. she said it's hot in uh, Chicago. Wow. Oh geez, yeah. We'll have to look. Yeah, I haven't looked check the weather know, around either. the nation. Sometimes it's fun to keep up on everything. Hopefully. But Rosie is in 7B. Okay. 7B. Okay. Really close to our 8B. Yeah. So yeah. very cool. Cool. All right, but guys. But yeah, we're going to go into some questions from YouTube yes. and then we'll jump into our main topic. And main topic. Yeah. Yes. Shade, shade loving plants in containers and designing with them. So it's going to be a great topic today. Um, as Allison said already, yeah, excuse me, jump into the chat. You know, tell us hi, let us know you're here, and uh, tell us how's it going, uh, what your gardening, what your garden projects are oh, today. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so. I know, we've got a couple big projects on tap. You guys, we're still pulling vinca out of different oh. areas of our yard. Yeah. I don't know if you've watched some of our previous videos, and we've probably talked about it, but we're always mm -hmm. pulling vinca out. It's like we love it. It's a beautiful ground cover, but if you don't control it, it just takes over. Yep. It can. It can be very invasive. Very and invasive. We're updating part of different parts of our yard kind of all the time. I know, kind of always. <laughs> so kind of last year, thing. yeah, last year it was the front yard. This year it's the backyard. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're making some new room for a whole bunch of new plants. And uh, yeah, we can't we... wait to show you guys it. Um, it's still under development though. And uh, yeah, but it's coming up. I know it's gonna be so. F I can't wait to get these plants in the ground. And did you just mention that one of the whole areas is fully shaded? No, well, it's, I haven't a, it's like that, more no. like part shade, right? It's partly to mostly shaded. It's under a couple of trees. One yeah. of them is like a 90 foot plus tall old fir tree. Oh, yeah. We need and to cut some branches yeah, off that. Yeah, the, the, the fir boughs are going out probably almost 30 feet. It's, I mean, they're huge. They're, they're huge, huge boughs it's going a huge out. Huge old so, tree. So, yeah, so we got to get that under control. But it's, yeah, there's, was it a crab apple? Mm -hmm. um, there's a giant petoni aster. aster growing. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, we've got a lot of shade over it's there. It's a dry shade area too. Yep. And it's it's an interesting kind of landscaping area. And mm. it presented a few challenges, but for the most part, we're pretty excited to add some of these new plants that we'll show yeah, you. And soon. if you've and if you've ever thought about it, a dry shade a dry area shade, of your garden, yeah. it's kind of an interesting challenge. And um, you might have thought about it. Um, but uh, for us, it's a little new getting into that area and refurbishing that area. So we've been doing a lot of plant selection and we can't wait to show you what we got. I know, we're really so, excited. 
too. Um, yeah, so let's take a minute. A couple oh. of you are um, jumping on. So good morning, everybody. Good morning. Hello. Um, we've got Kim Matlock. Said, hey, Kim. Um, it was a really wet week there in Atlanta, where she is. Oh, okay. And then she said, followed by 90 degree temperatures and 100% humidity. Oi. So I remember, Kim, you, we were all talking about dahlias last week and how you were concerned. So how did your dahlias do oh, through the week? Oh, yeah, yeah. Are they drying out now and kind of, you know? Yeah, hopefully they're doing okay yeah. with all that rain. I remember your question, yeah. Yeah, sometimes out here we'll get up to about 95% humidity on the West Coast out here, but I don't know if we ever get really to 100% oh, very, very rarely. often. Yeah, yeah very So rarely. can't imagine what that's like, especially with those hot, hot temperatures. Wow. So that's, yeah. Ugh. Definitely hoping your plants are kind of bouncing out of their, yeah. you know, that, I mean, that's a lot of different temperature changes, you know, and yeah, um, that, conditions. Yeah, and then all the diseases and stuff that can, not trying to worry. Oh, no, I know, don't but, worry. But there's different things that can happen with high humidity and hot temperatures. So maybe bring some fans out if you don't have any air, bring some fans out and blow them on all your plants. Oh, wow. Kidding. I'm like, Kidding. wow. That'd be interesting, People though. probably do that. Yeah, they probably do. <laughs> Goodness. Um, good morning, Mark. Mark hey, is Mark. in Texas. He good said morning. it's going to be 105 degrees in El Paso oh, today. man. Wow. Outdoor projects this week and the next couple of days are out of the question. Wow. Oh, yeah, new man. echinaceas will have to wait. Oh, mm. you got new echinaceas. Oh, you lucky guy. You, I don't man. know if you've heard me say this before, Mark, but that's one of my absolute favorite flowers. I absolutely yeah. love cone flowers. We both do. Yeah, yeah they're a very nice flower. They're, they're beautiful. They they're add a so lot. so beautiful. Um, yeah, they do so many great things in a garden besides they just do. being beautiful. They're so. just cool to look at, too. I'm but, after the um, cantaloupe uh, hmm. echinacea this year. It has kind of like a double... I can't explain it, but it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, variety, and I really want to find it. Yeah, I that's want to know more a, about it. That's on my list. Let's right know more. Now. So, Mark, we want to hear what you got. Yeah. Okay, um, let's see. Rosie, oh, we said hi to Rosie. Rosie said, um, and Amber's here as well. Oh, so hi, Amber. Hi, Amber. Morning. Amber said she's moving plants around a lot and trying to get them acclimated, and she's really mm. impressed with her double impatience. Ooh, and totally agree. Pretty. We have some to show you that we, we planted this year, and we're yeah. loving them. And patients are just such a cool plant. They're a great shade plant. They're mm -hmm. just nonstop color and blooming all mm -hmm. season. Yeah, and there's a bunch of different kinds there's out so there. Many colors a couple different, too. Yeah, so many different colors, and there's uh, different sizes too. So yeah, it's really cool to That's have that type of a plant just for partly to mostly shade. It's awesome. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And good morning, G Baldassano. Yay. Hey, good morning, G. Good, glad, so glad you guys are here. And um, G said good morning and sorry he's late. No, no worries. Oh, man. No, we're, we're pretty, still waking up. It's Saturday morning. <laughs> we're, we're pretty cash around here. We're, so we're, just, we're, we're just glad you're here, man. So Yeah, we should jump yep. into some questions, you guys. And thank you all for chiming in. Yeah. And we'd love to hear from you um, totally. again what projects you're up to. And, yay. So, okay. So okay. our first question from this past week came from Sharon LaFay. So, Sharon, hey, if Sharon. you're here, here's your question. This was um, on our most recent video. I think, it was, no, not most, most recent, but adding new plants for afternoon sun and curb appeal. From this week. That was a fun planting project, yep, yep. which afternoon sun, morning shade, that's another interesting challenge. Mm -hmm, it is, yeah. Right. Yeah, besides the dry, the dry shade area of a garden, yeah. Yeah, the afternoon sun, all day shade type of, uh, yeah. yeah, planting area. Anyway. I, I know, yeah. we could go on. Okay. <laughs> So, great question from Sharon. Her question is, I can't seem to keep my coleus happy. Any suggestions? Coleus can be a little tricky, a little coleus. finicky, just yeah. a little bit. But mainly, um, you know, there's new varieties. We should mention this. There's newer varieties coming out that are almost full sun, which is awesome because usually yeah. in the past, coleus have been pretty much a full shade to even... Uh, even just up to partial shade, maybe partial sun, but there's some that are coming out now, especially this year from Proven Winners. Is it Proven Winners or is it is it um, American All American we have, Selections? Yeah, All American Selections, all -American and selections I believe I think actually Proven Winners. winners. I think so, they, so both of there's those, a lot of cultures. Both of those organizations, yeah, there's so many. Um, they're producing coleus plants that are pretty much full sun. They can take full sun, and that's awesome because mm -hmm. that makes it even more versatile and such a great plant. We've got a couple of them right up here. Uh, we wanted to show you. Um, so to answer your question, uh, Sharon, yes, they can be finicky. It's a little hard sometimes because they are very susceptible to rot. Um, if they're too wet, if they're kept too wet, um, a lot of times, meaning they're basically overwatered, uh, whether you're doing the watering or Mother Nature's doing the watering, um, they don't like that. And so they will, they will wilt, but they'll also start rotting. And we've had a little yeah, bit of that we, happen to us this did, year, unfortunately. Yeah. We just, they were out in the weather. Um, they got a little too wet. And we, we weren't able to monitor it well enough, and they just they just died on us. And it's too bad, but, no, I mean, it happens. It happens. You know, you, you can only control so much. So that's that's one thing to keep on uh, keep on top of is the watering. Make sure they're getting just enough water, but not too much. 
So not really soggy, moist soil all the time. You don't want that. Try to let the soil dry out just a tiny bit. Not all the way, not like a geranium, but um, let the soil just dry out a little bit between waterings. Um, also, uh, they don't like really even cool, but definitely don't like cold temperatures. I'm sure you already know this, and a lot of you out there already know this. Um, they don't like freezing temperatures. They, they literally just wilt and die uh, with uh, freezing temperatures uh, and frost. So that's a bad deal. And I don't know if that's, if that's happening where you live or if you're having like nighttime, really cool nighttime temperatures. What we noticed in our area yeah. is we've had, um, for some of our coleus too, they wilted. Some, we had one that we went and bought from a local nursery, brought it home, and because it was still in the greenhouse and it was protected, but because it was exposed to under about 50 degrees uh, at night, nighttime temps, it, it just died I on know. us. It just was literally so just it was beautiful. disintegrated. It was really sad. And we're, it's interesting because there's a little bit of, there, there's a lot of confusing, not a little bit, there's a lot of confusing information out there and noise on coleus about, you know, what it's, uh, what it's hardy to, uh, down temperatures, what it can uh, be, uh, what it can tolerate. And it's kind of, it's a little bit all over the board. Some people say down to 40 degrees. Some articles will say down to 40 degrees. Some will say, you know, only down to 60 degrees. And then they start to get impacted. What we noticed around here, just in general, is that uh, about 50 degrees, they're okay at about nighttime temps down to 50 degrees. But after that, down below that, they just don't do well. And we pretty much, we, we lost actually a couple, not not just a few, but or one, but a couple. And so... Um, what we would what we would say for your question too is make sure that they're in temperatures probably at or above 50 degrees just to keep them healthy and not to impact them with any type of cool temperatures. Um, there, there's that to consider. And then also um, if they're a partial shade to full shade type of coleus, uh, a little bit not not the newer ones but just the general run of the mill older ones, uh, try and keep them protected during intense parts uh, intense sunny parts of the day. Um, even if they're in shade, just make sure to go check them and make sure they're out of that intense sun because we've, uh, we had a couple last year that got a little bit of speckled intense sun uh, out in our front yard and they, they did some funky growing stuff. They kind of wilted a little bit. Yeah. We saw some interesting uh, growth on them where they were kind of falling over. They, they snapped such back. such a bummer. Like you just have high hopes for these plants and then they kind yeah. of just react or have a mind of their own or had something they came in with, like yep. you explained. Totally, yeah. Sometimes they, they you, just, you'll buy them and they'll have that rot, but you so won't sad. see it <laughs> because it's all below ground. Yeah. It's just been overwatered, unfortunately, by probably somebody at the nursery. So those things, uh, take those things into consideration, especially with the temperatures. Get a little bit more familiar with the specific uh, cultivar variety that you have of the coleus and see what it's actually hardy down to, whether that's on the tag that's or it's on the grower's website, wherever it was grown, um, hopefully somewhere in your area. Look at that and try and get a sense of that because that could give you some insight into um, what's going on with your plant and those cooler temperatures. And lastly, if you just transplanted it, you could be seeing some transplant shock and that's why it's kind of maybe falling over a little bit or wilting. So if it's just that, it'll snap back out of it. Yeah. Just make sure you're keeping all the basic care needs up on it. So you should be good. Hopefully it, they snap out of it and they're looking really good for you the next I couple know, of days. That was a great, that's a lot of really oh, good info of because info. coleus is, they're just beautiful this time of year and we want to oh, yeah, we want to nurture guys. them. And we've got a few, now Sharon's here in the chat. Aren't so she, um, oh, hey Sharon. Sharon said the leaves are wilting and falling off and she has them in containers that can move them around. Okay, so good. that's good. Right? Okay, yeah, Sharon, if you still have some leaves, if there's still leaves on them um, and those look healthy, yeah, get them, I would do two things. Yeah, get them into the shade, full shade if you can for now, and just kind of take some or any type of stress off of them that they might be seeing right now that they might be under, and then also really keep an eye on the watering. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, so hopefully they snap I know. out. Of we're it. really hopeful because we know how you feel. We had, I mean, like you already explained, but we had this happen already. And yeah. it was this beautiful coleus and it just disintegrated. Yeah, it literally it just fell apart. It just fell apart. Wow. And it was like, oh man, and we thought we were taking good, really good care of it. So we're pretty sure that it came in like that. Yeah. So yeah, that was a bummer. But, but, but yeah, we hope, hope that's helpful. Yeah, hope and so. And let us know how it goes. And yeah, yeah we'll be fingers crossed for that. Yeah. So, um, okay, so a couple things in the chat here. Oh, I have to mention this out loud. So thank you, Mark, because Mark's like, he said that he knows that cone flowers are one of my favorite flowers. Ah. <laughs> he said he, Walmart had a great one gallon um, and Home Depot had huge two gallon. Ooh. Okay, I'm heading there. Wow. Uh -oh. That might be a trip Mark, this what weekend. are you doing to me, man? 
<laughs> this might be on our list now. What are you doing? So <laughs> he got, um, it sounds like a, a whole bunch of different cone flowers. Powwow melon. Mm. I haven't heard of that one, but I got to look because powwow cool. um, wild berry is one that we have in our yard, and that's actually an AAS winner. So oh, I'm wondering yeah. if, yep, yep. I don't know, I'm not familiar with the, um, the melon one, but that sounds pretty awesome. Cool. So um, he has light pink, dark pink, pale yellow, gold, tomato. Tomato? That's Red sombrero. Now, I'm curious Ooh, if we pretty. have that, I think. We have sombrero. We have sombrero Baja burgundy. Yes. That's the one we yes, have. Yes, that's the one we got. Yep. And that's a cool one. But a red cone flower is just so striking because it's mm -hmm. just. It can be. The one we have is yeah. so vibrant wow. red. It's just yeah. gorgeous. Yeah, thanks, Mark. All so, good suggestions, yay. man. Those are awesome. Oh, my gosh. Lots yeah. of plant ideas. I'm de right Like on. I'm telling you, the one I'm on the lookout, you know, I'm always on the lookout for like one plant. Last year, all of last year, it was the Egyptian lavender, the uh, fern leaf. Fer fern leaf lavender. We finally found that. That was like the biggest hooray ever. Now it's this cantaloupe coneflower. And I know they sell it. It's not like that hard to find, but. Um, we want to go to a nursery. Yeah, we they have it at Watson's. Oh, you've seen it. Which is our favorite okay, nursery here in the area. It's not out yet, but it should be soon. Oh, okay. And I know our really good friend Susan Mulvihill grows it in Spokane, and I always get jealous when I see her pictures because it's just so pretty. <laughs> okay, so enough of that. Um, let's see. Okay, regarding um, dahlias in Kim Matlock's garden, let's oh, yeah. see what Kim said. Yeah, update. Kim said the dahlias have been floating in water this week. Oh, but they should dry out quickly yes. with the hot temps. Mm -hmm. So they um, they grew a lot in the rain, and several have buds. So that you know Ooh. they're going to be fine. Silver lining. They're That's awesome. Be okay. Heck yeah. Well, and especially yeah. Kim, if you have that well-draining soil, that water hopefully will quickly go away. It'll just it'll just drain. It'll infiltrate around and down and away from your uh, your tubers there. So. And you know the yep. best part, you don't have to water for a few days. Yeah, right. <laughs> so that's that. <laughs> Maybe you got to collect some of that rainwater too. And oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Spend your spend your uh, your watering duty time doing something else. You know, you never know. Amen. And then, um, good morning to Kat. Kat says, oh, um, Kat. this is so nice. Thank you. She said, I love you guys. Great shows with so much knowledge. Thank ah, you. Thank, thank you, Kat. Thank, thank you, you really. That, that really means a lot to hear that. And thank you for being here and joining us because yeah. that is, cool. um, that's why we're here. Yeah, that's why we just yeah, want to be we do with you guys do. and talk about plants. Yeah. Um, okay, so that was a lot about coleus that was and awesome. other things. So moving on to our next question. This is about caring for fuchsia hanging baskets, one of our favorite shade plants. Yes. Um, this comes from A Day with Alex is the name. How do you get your fuchsia more rounded and faker? I'm wondering we're we're wondering, wondering if that's supposed to be fuller. It meant, yeah, it might have been autocorrect on a phone or something. And faker came out, but it's supposed to be fuller. Rounded and fuller, maybe? Fuller, yeah. And yeah. not long and viney off the sides. So how do you get it more rounded, more full, less really, viney, really good. stringy looking? Yeah, really good question. Yeah, and so we're, we're kind of going through the same process, it sounds like, as you might be going through. Um, a day with a Alex. Day with I Alex. almost said just Alex, but a day with Alex. Um, so yeah, so and we kind of we kind of jotted some stuff down. It's it's kind of a three prong system that we do, and we've got an example here in just a minute. But basically, Alex, what you want to do is you want to pinch. You want to so first you want to pinch the plant in specific spots so it will not grow out viney and stringy, but it'll expand and get thicker. Then then after that, what you want to do is basically on a weekly basis. Uh, is turn the plant 180 degrees if you can. So if it's on a hanging, if it's on a hanger, you want to take it off the hanger and turn the whole plant and pot 90 degrees and then reattach it. Or if it's on the ground, you want to turn it 180 degrees. And so it's getting exposure on all the sides and you're turning it on a weekly basis. So those, those opposite sides of the pot are getting that exposure to the light and then it'll be more balanced It'll look fuller. And then the third prong. So you got pinch, you got turn. I like that. And then we got fertilize. So that's the three prong system right there. And so what you want to do is you want to fertilize your, your fuchsias on a weekly basis or every other week, depending on what you can do and what, um, what fertilizer you're using. Make sure to read the label on the fertilizer um, on that bag or the container. Just got to throw that out there. Um, so yeah, so the three prong system, try that out, pinch, uh, turn and fertilize. I love so that. I know we have a prop. Okay. And so here's here's our prop. We love props. So here's our prop. It hasn't flowered yet. But... These are our cuttings. We actually made these cuttings last mm -hmm. fall, and so you can see we've got. Uh, we haven't been doing our own system of turning it because we need to. Wow. Because all these plants, 
all three of them. There's one here, one here, and one here. They're all growing that way. <laughs> so we haven't been turning it. And you can see that because these stems are, are longer. They're all angling this way. So what we want to do is take this, and you can do this too, is just gingerly take the plant and move it over. You can take these stems and move them over and try and get the plant to grow in different ways that way. But you can see it's kind of stringy. So what we're going to do, Alex, and everybody else out there, is we've got... Oh, okay, thank you. Well, we've got this one piece right here. It's getting stringy, right? It's just coming off. You can kind of see it there. It's just, it's just this one piece coming out. We want it to expand. We want it to get thicker. And how we're going to do that is we're going to pinch it. Can I double this? I'm okay. I think. Okay. I think I'm all right. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to pinch it. And you can see I've got this long stem. If I bring this down, you can see, maybe you can or can't, there's a bud breaking here and cool. growth happening here. And then the same thing over here with new leaves and, a, and stems growing out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this part of the stem away and that's gonna make this biochemically, we're telling the plant biochemically, grow this way and this way, you're not gonna grow this way because we're gonna remove it. So I'm just gonna take it, I'm just gonna pinch it off. It's really easy to do, especially with the nice soft uh, tissue. And there you go. You can snip it too if you're worried, right? Oh yeah, yeah totally. You yeah, you, snips you snips if you got them. Um, but yeah, so just pinch it. You can do that in different points, like down here. I can do that again. Let's maybe raise that up a little bit. Oh, okay. Sorry, guys. And so I did that here. Maybe if I turn it to the side. So you can see now it's not growing as far out, and we're telling the plant to grow this way and this way, and that'll take care of that stringiness. Um, that'll make the plant, we're encouraging the plant to grow out and grow out sideways and not out lengthways. So you need to do that around the whole plant as best you can, especially if you have stringy pieces. And so you'll get that fullness. And then what you need to do, and what we need to do now too, yeah, is turn, turn it 180 degrees. So if it was like this, let's say, well here, because this is how we first oriented it when we had it, uh, when brought up here. Uh, all the stems are growing this way. So what we want to do is we want to then take it off. Let's say it's hung. I know, because the hanger goes one direction, oh, yeah. so you don't think goes. about it. So, yeah, so the hanger, take it off its hang point, turn it 180 degrees, so the hanger's not, so the end of the hanger's not facing this way, facing that way, if that's a little bit easier for you to track it that way, and then rehang it. And then what'll happen is, is now the plant's gonna say, oh, well, I'm not gonna grow this way, because that's, that's the opposite of where I was growing before. I want to grow back this way. So then it's going to change some of this growth pattern up here. And as you do that continually, it'll train the plant to follow the light, grow in those ways, and you'll get more of a balanced uh, growth pattern on yeah, this plant. Now, how often would you change it? Maybe weekly? Yeah. Yep. I, I would, yeah, if, if we can. Oop, little spider. <laughs> get off there. Okay. Um, so yeah, I would change it on a weekly basis, weekly. turn it on a cool. weekly basis, and then, yeah. yeah, you'll be guaranteed more of a balanced growth pattern. Cool. Yeah, okay. so pretty cool. We so need to do that. Hopefully that answers your question, Alex. Yeah, if so not, let us know. Of, lots of tips, so pinching, turning. Pinch, turn, fertilize. Maybe weekly and rotate. Yeah, weekly on the rotation cool. and maybe okay. the fertilizing. Yep. Nice. Yep. Don't pinch it on a weekly basis. I should, oh, be, I should try and be clear. That's true. We should try and be clear. Don't pinch it on a weekly basis because then if you pinch it on a weekly basis, you're going to probably have this big bushy plant up top and nothing's going to grow down the bottom because nothing's been let to grow. So maybe in a general sense, maybe pinch maybe every three weeks to a month if you need to. If needed, you don't yeah. need to pinch all the time. So only if it needs it. So hopefully I'm that really, helps. Yeah, I'm really excited to see our cuttings are doing well. It takes a while for fuchsias to bloom and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. It's just like it takes a while for them to get going. But yeah. They're looking pretty good. Yeah, it's yeah. It's exciting. Yeah, they're doing really well. So yes. um, Okay, so, so moving, on moving on to Stromy 53 or Strom 53. Sorry, we're not Stromy. sure. Stromy. But we know you're here often, so if you're here, let us know. Yeah. Um, so our mo one of our, again, videos uh, this past week, adding new plants for afternoon sun and curb appeal. Uh -huh. She had an awesome question. So when we talked about this for a while this morning because uh -huh. we were like, oh, that's a great, great mm -hmm. idea. So. Mm -hmm. Will Calabrocoa, or Calabroca, depending on how you say it, will it grow in these conditions as a substitute for supertunias? So the conditions being, we had this area again where we have all morning shade and then a little bit of dappled through the afternoon, mm -hmm. but then full blazing sun in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a very unique, it's a unique, um, unique setup in a yeah, garden, for, for us anyway. Um, maybe some of you some, out there yeah. have the same challenge. So great question. Can you substitute Calabrochia, Calabrocoa? Sorry. We say it both ways. Yeah, so. we're, yeah. 
um, can you substitute it for a petunia? A petunia. And the quick answer is yes, you can. But there's a caveat. But, yeah. There's a caveat. So to give you a little backstory here, the Calibrachoa is actually a, a smaller version, the smaller cousin, basically of a petunia. They're so beautiful. They're very oh. closely related. They're actually in the same plant family. Their flowers look the same, except and the leaves look the same. But on a Calibrachoa, the leaves and flowers are definitely smaller. And Calibrachoa has a more compact growth pattern than, say, a petunia in general, or even a super petunia. I think that's still so, an ACA family. Yes. That's interesting. Yes. And yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it is really cool. Um, so um, with the caveat with Calibrachoa as a substitute for the petunia is the Calibrachoa don't like to be watered. Don't be in, though they don't like to be watered a lot. They are very susceptible to, or very wet conditions, I should say. Yeah. They don't like wet conditions. They're very susceptible to root rot and, and a couple different kinds of rots. So mm -hmm. this caveat means that you're not going to water that plant as much as you would a uh, as a excuse me as a petunia. Um, what Calibrachoa like to have happen? An easy way to think about this is when you water before you water, check to see if that top layer, maybe the top half inch, top inch of soil around the plant is dry. And if it is, then you can water the plant. But if it's still wet hold off, or if it's even moist, hold off on actually watering the plant until that top layer, that little top layer of soil is dry. Otherwise, you can uh, encourage different kinds of rot around the plant. And we actually saw this I know, I was just thinking about that, because we, we had some beautiful plants sent from Proven Winners, and mm -hmm. you know, you, normally plants that are sent via the mail, I, you're mm -hmm. kind of taking a little bit of a gamble, right? Because it's like, yeah. these plants are coming from Michigan all the way yeah. to Tacoma, for our case. Yep. So... They pack it in whatever they pack it in, you know, whatever kind of medium. And by the time it gets here, we have had, we had three Calabrocas that were gorgeous and mm. only one of them actually made it. Yeah. One, yeah, one of that them. That was a big bummer. One, one of the three that came, um, it's about a day or two later uh, after it got here, it literally was rotting it, like, from the center. Fell apart. And yeah, just, just literally just brown and gray and black colored growth and stuff on it. And it just literally, yeah, fell apart. A day or two later after we got it and i should we should throw in that proven winners was awesome we let them know and they sent us a replacement yeah. they actually sent us two yep. and i should um back up this was like this is for a future video coming up so mm -hmm. this was actually a donated plant yeah and they took care of the problem and i know they do this with i mean we ordered a lot of plants from proven winners yeah. Yeah. Um, they that were we paid for this year for sure mm -hmm. and they're really good about all of that they were super efficient about really it efficient. really easy to work with and uh, chances are what happened was is just something for, something happened between when the plant was was packed up um, at the grower's site and then shipped to us something happened there with just a, maybe a little bit too moisture too much moisture or it just was in transit too long with that moisture around it and because when they transport plants if you've never gotten a plant before um, through the mail, they really pack them up. Yeah, I mean, do. those packages are just tight and strong it's, and sturdy. It's so cool to unwrap and, like a plant. You yeah, know, it's, it's, just it's, crazy. it's crazy. But so, um, so I'm just trying to just lay out that um, just some of these different factors because we just really don't know what wow. happened from from what point to when it got to here. But it can happen. It happens easily with Calibrachoa for that rotting. So make sure to not overwater it. So, no. so, it, but yes, to answer your question, it is a good substitute. Well, and I'm kind of thinking like, um, and this was Stromy 50 yeah. Um It's always worth a try, I guess, right? I mean, mm -hmm. if you want to try it, go for it. Calibrachoa would be yep. a beautiful, you know, fill-in plant, you know, and yep. there's no reason why you couldn't try it. But no. again, it's going to, I almost kind of worry that it would cause a little more maintenance though, because you're going to have to remember, oh, don't water this plant as much as these so it's, or it's, it depends on what possible. you plant around it, right? Exactly. Yep, exactly. Because then you don't want to create a big maintenance problem where you're, yep. you're I don't know. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a little hesitant to say plant it. I mean, it, it's well, kind of like try it, but. I mean, it's always situation dependent, yeah. right? Yeah, but definitely the plants around it, like you said. Um, it, it's it basically you'd want to plant it with some, with the plants around it that could be slightly to moderately drought tolerant. Um, and that would work. Um, you could plant a, a good way to look at this is Calibrachoa could be planted with possibly, um, you know, zonal geraniums where zonal geraniums like to have their soil kind of more on the drier side than on the wetter side. And so they like to have that dry out of the soil between waters. Well, Calibrachoa would fit really well with those, right? In the same container or uh, in, in a bed somewhere with all the same types of conditions of full sun, 
um, or part sun, and then having um, having just that well draining soil. I mean, th that that'd be a good fit. So think yeah, about it in those like terms. That. Yeah. I, I so, just, I, cool. again, really quick, Caliber Color is so beautiful. There's oh, so is. many different colors. It is. It really can Amazing. just complement anything that you want to plant, especially, you know, your annuals, unless you're lucky enough to have a zone where it can live over. I know. We're not that lucky. Well, but randomly, we had some live over. We have. We're, it's zoned we to 9B, I think. Yes. Or 9A. 9A, 9B, something like that. Oh, yeah, and it's, yeah, we, we had one over winter, which. Which was random. Uncommon. It was outside. It's yeah. outside up against the greenhouse completely neglected uh, I, we forgot about it i mean literally <laughs> didn't even know it was there so but technically according to the zones it's not supposed to overwinter here and it's, we treat it we're supposed to treat it as an annual yeah. so but we're you know us we're pretty much pushing a lot of the, the, the boundaries, zonal boundaries yeah. of and planting boundaries of gardening so you should try that too just to see what happens because you never know well now i'm, I'm really concerned we're not going to have enough room in our greenhouse over the winter because oh. i'm already like we're going to pack in so much stuff i wonder i guess that means we need a bigger greenhouse we need a bigger greenhouse how do we make that happen <laughs> okay so moving on um oh same video this video brought up a lot of really good questions I feel like, um, again, adding new plants to ap late afternoon sun, it's it's a question that I think I noticed a lot of people had, you know, when we were doing some research for this. Mm -hmm. It seemed like, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There was a lot of questions out there that we uh, we saw possibly on Google and then just uh, people in general asking us different questions about semi-shaded, semi-full yeah. sun areas. And the, the area that we have, that we recorded that video on, it's, it's very unique in the standpoint that it's mostly shade all day. And then there's just afternoon intense sun and heat. So, um, yeah, it, it was it was, it was a, really fun. It was a fun and like we yeah. said in the video, it's like a puzzle, right? It was like yep. not only do we have that the light kind of parameters, but mm -hmm. it kind of comes to an angle and it's like on a slope a little bit. So, mm -hmm. in order to improve the curb appeal, we had to find plants that kind of fit all these parameters, and we yep. went with a really colorful assortment. So we're really excited. To well, see and Allison growing. did all the footwork, I should well, say. Allison did all the footwork on this plant selection, um, and she did a great we job. We talked about the colors beforehand. I totally oh, was impulsive, and Sean was yep. was out doing something one day, and I just went down to the nursery and bought a whole bunch of plants. So I was like, I hope you like what I got. But she did a great job. She <laughs> so did a I great was job. Like, ah! so, yep. But um, usually we do that together, so I kind of jumped the gun on that one. But. All right. So Gloria Matthews would like to ask a Gregor. question. This is really a cool question. Her, okay, so my daughter gave me a rose of Sharon hibiscus, okay? Um, I heard it can be aggressive or invasive. Should I plant it in a bigger tub, like a container? Um, how should I plant that in the ground properly not to overcrowd my arborvitaes? Really good question. And she asked that on our, on our afternoon sun video. <clears throat> That's interesting. I cool. know that was that was okay. a cool question. Yeah, and that yeah that video generated that question. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, that's yeah. So thank you, Gloria, yeah, for asking really. that. Yeah. And you know you made us think because Rose of Sharon hibiscus. If you're not familiar with that out there, um, we can grow that in our area. It is a perennial. It'll overwinter um, here, and so, yeah. but it's not invasive here. And so, but it's invasive in certain areas of our country and other parts of the world, definitely. That's interesting. And yeah, like, um, what did I write down? Because we, we were unfamiliar with the invasiveness of it. So it was an eye opener. So you really helped us learn something new on this because it was really cool. Um, and I'm wondering, you guys watching, is it? In, do you know of that being an invasive you know, plant in your area? Yeah, totally. Like, yeah. what do you know about um, that? Because, again, that's, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we just here. never thought about it. It's like, we want hibiscus to grow here. We're right on that level, that cusp of, will it grow here? Won't it grow here? So, um, yeah, so it's like, we want it to grow here. So, um, so yeah, I think, uh, what did I write down on the notes? It's invasive in places like Tennessee, mainly yes. back east, um, from us anyway. So Tennessee, Pennsylvania, maybe Kentucky. And so it depends definitely on the climate, uh, where it's growing. And um, it's actually, it's invasive because it spreads by its seeds. It actually self-sows. It produces, you know, the beautiful flowers. Then they go to seed. Um, they set seed and then they disperse the seed and so it can spread by its own seed. It's really viable. It produces really viable seed. So in these areas, these specific areas, it doesn't do that here as far as we're aware of. So, um, but yeah, so uh, Gloria, it, what's her, I Gloria. can't remember. Yeah, Gloria, and she says she wants, there was like two questions, all right? I, I wanna plant, oh, how should I plant it in the ground properly to not overcrowd? So. Basically, uh, Gloria, the plant can get kind of big. It can get 8 to 12 feet tall. Wow. And it can get probably, I think I read read up on it again, and it was like 6 feet to 8 feet or more wide. So it can get pretty good size. So um, 
and Allison and I were talking about this, like, you could make a hedge out of that. That would be so cool to have a hedge of hibiscus, uh, hibiscus there. So anyway, so um, if you're going to plant it in the ground, Gloria, make sure to plant it so um, you, you have it planted with its uh, mature size in mind. And that means the six to eight or more feet uh, uh, spacing from your uh, from your arborvitae and the way to look at that too is uh, we don't think about this people think oh I need to I need to place them six to eight feet away from each other and it's like yes you can but the way that I look at it and the way I was trained is look at the plant look at its center and six to eight feet wide meaning look at that center and go three to four feet this way and then three to four feet this way and that should give you the proper spacing of that plant in relation to other plants around it um, and so keep that in mind if you're planting it in the ground. Um, and then um, there I would was... always say go with a container, like you said. You know, just yeah. if you're worried about that invasiveness, just yeah, the container's cool. And it, and and part of her question was, is uh, her statement was that she got it from a daughter. So that's a that's, really cool. I know that's such a mean, yeah, nice mm -hmm. meaningful gift. Really great gift. So, um, Gloria, depending on where you live, um, it might could be invasive. It might not. So what what we would say is check with your local extension agency first off. Call them up um, and say, uh, hey, I would like to know if Rose of Sharon hibiscus is invasive in our county or in our area. And they should be able to either give you a straight up answer, yes or no, or they can, um, they can direct you to somebody locally that might really know that, like a grower or somebody at one of the local nurseries that will know more about that. Um, if you're just going to plant it anyway, and you know whether you check with the local extension agency or a nursery person or not, um, what you want to do to head off any uh, invasiveness, go ahead, let the plant flower, enjoy those beautiful blooms. Oh my gosh, they're so gorgeous. And then once the flower, um, the flower dies, withers away, deadhead the plant right away. Don't let it go to seed all the way. Mm -hmm. Don't let that seed spread. Get the flower and those seed pods off the plant and into your recycle bin so it cannot spread. Which is what we should be doing with our lupin right now. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> Unless, well, that's a, that's a different story. It is invasive, a little bit invasive, a little bit invasive, but I like, yeah, that's a great suggestion. So anyway, I hope that answers your yeah. question, Gloria. Well, and um, so. there's a lot of people who've jumped in the chat, so oh, I'm sorry cool. for missing saying hi to you guys out loud, but thank you all for joining us. Yeah, Good thanks, morning. guys. Thank thanks. You, or some of you are afternoon, I believe, and um, maybe in India, I believe. Oh, cool. Well, so, yeah. Thanks for spending I your know, thank you. morning, afternoon, evening, uh, your evenings with us. We really appreciate it. We really it, guys. appreciate it. Super cool. So good morning to Connie oh and God, um, Connie hey. Graham. Um, Andrea's here. Andrea, Andrea. said, hey, this, Andrea. Is, "This cracked me up." She said, "Dang it, you guys are going to make me go buy a red coleus now because I see the one that you had right there." We'll talk about that one in a minute. That's Plant an awesome. Enablers one. unite. And I wrote that back. Right? Ah! <laughs> and then um, Neri Ailman. Good morning. Morning, Mary. Um, Neri, um, oh, Neri asked, "How can I kill an invasive plant? I have one behind my yard." Good question. Depends on the plant. Yep, it depends on the plant and what you want to do and how you want to go about doing it. Um, there's a couple different options. If you want to get rid of it right away, physical removal is always good, but try to get the roots out oh, and yeah. don't let it go to seed. Um, if you see it flowering, even if it's starting to flower and you don't want that plant in your garden anymore, cut those developing flowers off even before they go to flower, before they open up fully. Um, and then what you're doing is you're taking away that reproductive part and the spreading portion of that plant away from any of its seed, if it's uh, spreading that way. Um, if it's spreading through underground runners, like right. stolons or roots or anything like that, totally. um, remove, fully remove the root system and any of those runners. Otherwise, you could remove the first plant, but if you cut away and don't remove those roots, you could have new plants popping up um, wherever those roots are. So again, it depends on the plant. That's the physical removal of it. There's always the you know there's always the taboo chemical way to go but um, yeah we don't like that but though. that's that can get tricky yeah and then you get into local laws and federal laws so we try to stay away from that stuff and stay away from um, just spraying in general but like it's possible physical removal and Neri yeah. just chimed in that it's ivy ah ivy the good old we ivy we can totally so, sympathize with you with ivy and you really just have to pull it out yeah that that's I mean, yeah it comes down to that uh, Neri. The other thing we did, which was super cool, is um, when we removed ours, I think we have cool. a lot. I think I think ivy. it's super cool in here. Um, is we starve the plant, and this can come down to using a weed eater. It can come down to physically just removing all the leaves. But basically, what you want to do is cut down and remove all that leaf material so it can't photosynthesize and do it like on a weekly 
or every other week basis. So you literally starve those roots in the plant of photosynthesizing. And eventually, over time, it will kill that plant. It will kill the, uh, the ivy. Um, I've done this at previous jobs with huge six foot industrial mowers on hillsides, um, also with weed eaters, and it works. It takes time. So um, be prepared for that. It could take up to probably six months, maybe a little bit longer, depending on how old the ivy is and how well established it is in your garden. And then, you know, the environmental factors and all that stuff, uh, soil, sunlight, all that. But that's another way to do it. Besides physically removing it out of the ground, if you got some really big roots, starve it by cutting away and removing all of its ability to photosynthesize. photosynthesize. I was just yep. thinking that. But like, how do you get, so even though, even if you do that up top, what about the roots underneath? Well, they'll just die back because Eventually. They, they won't be getting the photosynthesizing, mm -hmm. you know, Eventually. they need. Eventually. That's, that's the part that takes time. So. Wow. Yeah. I know what's but, just, Ivy's just, ugh. Yeah. We feel your pain, Neri. Ivy. <laughs> but it can happen. It can happen. You can get it removed and get under control and get it out of there. Oh my gosh, that's so, a, that's amazing. We have an yep. entire lot. Kind of what Neri's kind of explaining. There's an empty mm -hmm. lot behind um, Neri's house, and it's a little scared to go in there. Oh, okay. Neri's a little scared to go over there, and I don't I don't blame you. We have a huge lot behind our property that is owned by a, a, a neighbor of ours, and mm -hmm. it's just covered in ivy. Yeah, it's even growing up the trees. It's Pulling, yeah, it's definitely going to start starving out some very, very large yeah. trees soon. So, but, anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, uh, but you got it, Neri. You got it. You just, got it. Just go after it. You'll get it done. Okay. Yep. Okay, you guys. Um, those are awesome questions. Keep them mm -hmm. coming. But we're going to move mm -hmm. on to our main topic. And mm -hmm. one before um, before we jump in, there's one thing we forgot to mention oh. earlier. Um, well, a little something, but. We, every week, those of you that are with us every week, you know, we always kind of focus on one fun topic and we, we ask for input from you guys, you know, just and take questions and whatnot. Yeah. So we're throwing out for oh, the yeah. whole month of yes, August yes, yes, an yes, yes. audience challenge. And yes. again, we're still kind of developing this, but we'll start really announcing it probably in first of July. Yes. But we're going to just get this in kind of a bug Excuse in your me. ear that um, there's going to be prizes involved each week of August. And we're throwing out to you guys to help us determine our topics yep. for August. Yep. The person. So for each week for the live topics on Saturdays through August, uh, each person's topic that gets picked will win, will be a, con a contest winner yeah. for basically t getting their uh, their topic picked. And then you'll be able to pick uh, on, on camera live if you want to, and if you're there, if you're able to make it, what uh, prize you want, and then we'll just send it off to you. Oh, I'm so, so excited. You guys know yeah. how much we love giving stuff away. We actually, just a little tease as well, we have a book we're going to be giving away a new book later this month. Not our book. Not our book. It's a but it's an awesome book though. We're just going to tease it, right? Yeah, we won't say what it is. We well, should even... we say what it is? No, we're not going to say what oh, it is. We're not going to say what it is. But it's something that could be really helpful for a lot of a lot of you. Yeah. Oh, it's totally. An awesome oh, book. yeah. It, it's you can yeah, it's it's usable throughout any garden yeah. anywhere for any type of gardening, really. Vegetables, flowers. Vegetables, flowers. So that'll be what the last live of this month. We'll be uh, we'll be doing that book giveaway. Is it? I think it's the last. I can't remember. I know we, our dates. Too are... much going on. How is it? Mid, it's coming up. We'll make an announcement. Already. We'll make an announcement uh, in the post uh, area later today, in the comments area later today, and uh, we'll give more information about that. Yeah. So yep. book giveaway. Woohoo! Fun stuff. Okay, let's talk about shade plants. Shade plants and shade plants for um, just like stuff flying around. <laughs> um, shade loving container plants. Yes. And yes. for those of us. Well, those of you, I should say, that live in really hot climates like Mark and some of you that live in really, you know, like mm -hmm. like L.A. area or any of those places, you probably love this idea because then you can actually enjoy the plants and sit with them Yeah, because <laughs> you could be in the shade. Yep. You don't burn right up. So, right? yeah. So, yep. So we're going to talk to you about um, just ideas with shade plants in containers like mix and matching um how to just how to do it and so we've got some different ideas and maybe some little few recipes to help you if you're thinking about yeah. this and give you maybe generate some ideas so uh there's some so many beautiful shade we have a oh, yeah. whole array of shade plants ahead in front of us oh yeah here. should we talk about those first um, or you wanna... well let's jump into the first jump slide into the, yeah okay a lot of you've been looking at these coleus we'll get to these in a minute and there's some other fun stuff over here Okay, so yeah, shade loving container shade plants. Loving plant. Some of these you've probably heard of before, you know, it's nothing really like new and amazing, but it's mm. just thinking about them like mm -hmm. and how they're we can how you can categorize certain plants into yeah. either foliage or flowering or or sensory. Sensory. Yep. Or, or even herbs. 
Yeah, herbs. Yep. I know there's a lot of um, herbs that grow in the shade. Yeah, there's yeah, but there's tons of different plants, not only in the shade, but they're so versatile for part shade and full shade, and um, just to have in those shaded uh, environments oh, or areas that. of your garden that you might otherwise be like, I don't know what to do here. I know. So you want to add color, you want to add interest, mm -hmm. but you know maybe you just need some ideas. Yeah, totally. So we've got up here uh, on. Uh, uh, on the screen here, we've got some ideas in the pictures here of different containers with all these different shade plants. Um, and we wanted to talk to you too, not only of, um, not only because uh, shade can be tricky and uh, growing plants and those things, but also the containers that you put the plants in. That can be tricky too, because um, you might only have certain kinds of containers or you might like certain kinds of containers and therefore that's what you want to use. So. But depending on which one you use, it's going to really change the whole effect of those plants in that container in that uh, in that area. Yeah, that's so a that's, really good point. You know, so whether it's terracotta, glazed, unglazed, uh, concrete or terracotta, uh, plastic. Or grow bag, you know, yeah. kind of like a canvas yeah. maybe type of bag. Yeah. So just some things to consider when you're designing and picking plants and the pots to put them in, in your shade area. I know, that's fun to think about. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, so starting on the uh, the... I guess the right side of your screen there's right some some container design kind of tips we've just yeah just starting out stuff we're kind of we're talking about some of them already so this might be a little yeah, redundant sorry. but um well just thinking about shade it doesn't have to be a challenge you know some people think of shade being a big challenge but mm -hmm. there are a lot of plants that are very versatile mm -hmm. that grow in either part to completely full shade yep. that do flower I mean, you just have to do a little bit of research. Yep, and you have to, it's always good to know what you like and what you want to see out in those areas of your garden. So kind of having that in the back of your mind or not even back of your mind, front and center of your mind when you're going through and looking for these. So first off, we wanted to also define um, what part shade actually means, yeah, what full shade means. And so this is a good way to quantify it. Part shade is four to six hours of light, actually, of, of actual sunlight. That's part shade. Full shade is less than four hours. So um, you might get a, we, we have a couple places in our yard where this full shade um, quantification actually uh, can be applied. Where in our backyard, we have places that get full sun, blazing hot sun, about noon or one o'clock, and then for about an hour, and then it's just complete shade the rest of the day. And it's interesting to think about because sometimes you might think, well, it's full shade, that means there's no sun all the time. but you know, and that's, you know, and then it's part shade. Well, it's like half the day it's part shade and half the day it's full sun. Well, in nature, it doesn't work that like that, right? In our gardens, we can observe that and see that those, uh, those cut and dry types of ways of thinking about uh, full shade, part shade, full sun, it really, it, it, we see it differently. We actually see what actually happens. And this is, uh, this quantification is a little bit, uh, it makes it a little bit easier to think about. Well, could we so. also, yeah, that's so true, all of that. And can we also, what if you would just have like a dappled sunlight all day? Mm -hmm. Now, could, wouldn't that be considered just like a part shade? Because you're getting a little yeah. bit of sunlight through. Yeah. Like a full day, like your whole yard might be covered by a big, large tree. So you don't mm -hmm. ever get that full sun. Yeah, and it can be a very... Um, uh, I don't know, I, I can't think of the word right now, but you can basically, I mean, a generalization, yeah, I would say that's part shade yeah, because you're, you're still getting that sunlight. It's like but dappled. I mean, you can take these large, you can take these terms and place them into large kind of categories and then take plants and put them in these different, you know, three different categories, full shade, part shade, and full sun. But it gets a little tricky mm -hmm. once you get into the details. And so that's why we put this up here. So that's, fun. Yeah, that's really good. So moving, so just again, these are just random kind of, overview of just container design. We're not getting into anything real specific here. It's just no. things to think about going into the um, plants we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm, totally. So again, um, shade is tricky, but it doesn't have to be. Mm -hmm. Container size. How big are the containers you're going to use? Because that's yeah. going to determine um, how many plants you add, if yeah. you know, to your containers. Yeah, totally. And also just thinking about what if you just want to have one specific plant in a container, like a mono planting, mm -hmm. or you're going to pack it full of like five or more plants. Yeah, yeah, and if you're gonna do more than one plant, make sure that the container size um, isn't gonna be too small for that amount of plants because even though you want a full container, you don't wanna take a 12 inch pot and put five five plants that are Large. gonna get, yeah, yeah right. that are gonna get maybe a foot and a half each big because I mean, they're literally gonna be growing over and into each other so thickly, it's gonna lead 
to a lot of problems. So, well, and, I mean, yeah. and that's, I mean, that's a really extreme example, but you know, it does happen. You do, you will see that. The only so. kind of a little caveat is, I mean, maybe you'd want to start obviously with a bigger than 12 inch oh, yeah. pot, but like totally. annuals you can really pack in, right? Because you, you're, you're well, kind of looking at it as a one season investment and then you're to a point, to a point, to a point, because I mean, if you have, if you're going again, if you're going with a 12 inch pot, and you're gonna five, you're gonna stick five impatience in there, or five coleus that are gonna get each about a foot and a half big. I mean, you're creating a huge, you can it's create a, a huge problem with moisture, with airflow, and with rot. I mean, and plus that amount of plants in that small of a container, what's gonna happen is, is they're all their roots. Not only are the top gonna grow over each other, but the roots are gonna grow down and grow into each other. They're gonna outgrow that pot in probably like a month. That's a good point. I mean, yeah. they're going to like strangle each other and then you, it's going to lead to not enough water and all, all these different stresses. So this is why container size, the amount of plants and how big those plants are that you're putting in that container all factor into when you're doing container design just in general. I know. And I love that you said that because I always, I'm so impulsive. I just want everything to be filled in and beautiful right away. I, I do too. So I'll look yeah. at one large container and we have a couple in our backyard right now where they're very large barrel size mm -hmm. containers that we just cut recently. Mm -hmm. and. We have three kind of smallish looking plants in them right now, but they're supposed to get really big. So mm -hmm. we planned for their mature size, mm -hmm. but it, it's kind of underwhelming at first, you know, cause you're just like, ah, they're so small. Yep. So it's patience, right? Yep, it's patience. It's keeping up with their, their regular, uh, what their needs are for sun, water and soil and uh, just giving them some fertilizer every week or two and just letting them do their thing. I know, yep. I gotta be patient. So moving on, so grouping of plants, like again, how many plants, um, what actually will go together? Mm -hmm. um, and that kind of blends into the next bullet point. This is thinking about plant care needs. Oh yeah. Oh Do you yeah. want to speak to that? One? Well, just, you know, when you're grouping the plants together, you want to make sure that um, they're, they're, all their care needs are the same. If they're not, then you're creating more problems. Uh, if you don't take that into consideration, that comes down to making sure the plants have, they, they have the need for the, um, the sunlight levels, and in this case, we're talking about shade or part shade plants. You want to make sure all those plants have that need, that part shade or full shade need. Otherwise, if you're putting plants together that um, have a full sun need in a shaded area, you're gonna you're gonna create a situation where the plants are gonna stretch and they might not even flower um, because they're not getting enough uh, they're not getting full, enough uh, light energy and enough heat exposure to actually trigger that plant to flower. And so there's other things that make plants that can make plants trigger to flower. But in general case, that's that's something you have to consider. Um, and then also, you know, water needs. If you're planting together a plant that, um, that loves a lot of water versus a plant that doesn't, um, like say you're gonna put like a, a, a petunia, let's say you put a petunia in with a geranium, you can make that work, that's okay, but you're running the risk of overwatering the geranium too much or underwatering the petunia too much because if you underwater the petunia it's going to look it's not going to it's going to look a little crispy it's not going to look as healthy but if you overwater if you give the petunia enough water that means you possibly could overwater the geranium and yeah. that'll lead to another couple of different kinds of rot because it doesn't like wet feet it doesn't like to be in moist soil all the time so these are just some examples of making sure that the plants needs work together and it's another type of puzzle yeah. to put together in your garden and we're going over all of this again ahead of all the plants we're going to show you because we're we're not showing yeah. you all their care needs and whatnot we're just giving you kind of like a list of plants yeah so it's kind of like keep these in mind right and oh, yeah. then do kind of your own research and and thinking about what you want to put together mm -hmm. totally yeah and i think i think we've already covered pretty much in the beginning oh we did the, materials. the containers yep. yeah the material the containers and then also um definitely the colors you want think about the colors you want the, the patterns you want to see if you just want a constant green uh, kind of like uh, what you see here, just a solid green and then flowers uh, for these uh, impatience mm, right here. Or if you want something more like uh, a pattern of color to see in different hues and colors like this, uh, this coleus and all these coleus up here. Um, just think about those things because um, once you put that plant together, those plants together or just that mono planting together, um, it's, it's going to be beautiful no matter what, but make sure it's what you want and just think about these things. Yeah, so, yeah that's a really good point. I think that's uh, where it gets fun too, right? You get to think about all the colors and mm -hmm. definitely. Okay. So we're going to uh, jump into some plant lists here. And some of these you've of course heard of before, but um, 
So these are shade loving container plants that are just known for their foliage. So they have beautiful colors mm -hmm. and shapes and textures and sizes, but they don't, well, some of these do flower. So there's a little bit of overlap. Yeah. But well, and like the coleus, the coleus the, will flower. Know, that's weird. It's just think. not known for its flower, yeah. right? So that's just something to think about when you're thinking about foliage plants is they do flower. Some of them are inconspicuous or just not known for their flower, right. but they will eventually flower. Like hostas. Hostas flower. Yeah. Some of you know that. You grow oh, yeah. hostas and they have just lush, beautiful, tropical looking leaves, but mm -hmm. they're not really known for their flowers. Although their flowers are a pollinator attractor, so there mm -hmm. are other benefits, mm -hmm. but hostas are usually grown for their foliage. Yep. And, and it will stump. That's funny. Uh, yeah, yeah. A hosta flowering, a lot of times will stump a lot of gardeners that aren't familiar with the flower of a hosta. Oh, right? Yeah. So it, it's fun to see that sometimes it's like, you know, it's just interesting that people say, what's that plant boy that's a beautiful flower it's like oh that's a hosta that's a hosta flower but it's like no it's not it's like yeah just look at the look at the leaves it has the leaves but there's a flower and it it's, it's cool it's almost like to me sometimes that flower almost looks like a gladiola flower um it's because it, it's a spike and, yeah. yeah it has those bell-shaped flowers and so it's an interesting mix so yeah it can throw some people that's so cool so yeah anyway okay so yeah let's talk about some foliage plants yeah so definitely the coleus um you can do a mono plant to Excuse me, you can do a mono planting of the coleus oh, plants so um, or you can mix them. And a way to think about the mixing is, um, you know, look at the size of the coleus, uh, its textures of its leaves, the colors of its leaves, and match that with um, probably maybe a solid colored uh, plant, uh, plant leaves and then flower. And we actually have that right here. I'll just pick this up right here because this is a good example of this. I, know, I love this one. But um, this is one of our planters outside. It and be a little small on the screen there. Oh, okay. Well, if you can see that here. We'll here, show it again maybe in a minute. Here's the planter, but here's our coleus plant right here. If you can see that. I and then it. we've got an impatient with it. You know? This it's is a, so it's pretty. Beautiful impatient. It's a double impatience. Yeah. Mm. Amber was talking about that earlier. This is yeah. this is our um, per, uh, out, Rocapulco purple. Rocapulco purple. From Proving Winter. Say that 10, ten times fast. Rocapulco purple. Rocapulco purple. <laughs> I can't do it. Okay. Um, any more practice. And then we've got a potato vine. Isn't that cool? I love those and, and colors. You just see this. I mean, you've got these different textures of leaves, the different colors, the hues, and then, yeah, just uh, it's, it's just beautiful how they work together. Well, not to mention just, you know, looking at color, and a lot of you are probably already know how to do this, but, you know, just this is just so, this just sets off so many other of the or so many of the other, I can't talk, so many of the other colors in mm -hmm. this container mm -hmm. because of its light brightness. You know, mm -hmm. it's just... This uh, potato vine, this light, light green color, just really makes the rest of the plants pop. Mm -hmm. It does. Yep. And this is one fun. of our, yeah, this is one of our part shade, full shade uh, planters out in our backyard, and it does really well. Yeah, it's it's looking awesome. We made two yeah. of these actually. Yeah. We have them on either side of our deck, kind of in the shade under an eave. Mm -hmm. So um, we're pretty happy with the way those are filling out so yeah. far. So, so that's, that's just an example. One. Yeah. And you can also get, if you're not familiar, there's creeping Jenny, which actually is kind of invasive. Uh, you got to keep yeah, your uh, is actually, keep your eye on that. That definitely spreads. Um, yeah, but there's also different kinds of ferns that love partial or full shade, and uh, the one up here on the screen is the heart's tongue. We actually planted that in a shade yeah, container. I know we didn't bring for, a picture of that. Um, but it was in a different video. That was our tropical yes. shade loving. Yes. Tropical. Yes. Yep. Yes. So, and there's also there's grasses, um, different types of grasses that like mm -hmm. uh, partial or even full shade. Uh, definitely hookeras. Oh my gosh. Oh, hookeras are cool. That's kind of a new one in our garden. I and know a lot of you maybe have grown that before, but mm -hmm. this is, we are, we're really enjoying it so far. And you can see there's an example up here. Um, I think that's from Proven Winners in the lower left-hand side of the screen. That's a, that's a mono planting of a hookera. And that's one that we're going to be growing actually in our shade garden that we're setting up. Yep. We have, I think, four of those we're adding. Oh, cool. Just the color is so beautiful. And you know, there's like purples and greens. And oh yeah. And then they do flower. Yep, and they change. Sometimes the leaves change color in the uh, in the oh, fall yes. too, when the fall season hits. That's beautiful. Nice seasonal mm -hmm. seasonal color there. That and then cool. we already talked about hostas, and those are just beautiful in general. We mm -hmm. don't really have an example up here. We couldn't bring our hosta inside. Sorry, guys. You can put hostas in containers <laughs> though, and that's something that I wouldn't think to do because yeah. they get so big. But there are a lot of container designs that you can find out there. Oh yeah. You can experiment and just oh, play yeah. around with them a little oh, bit. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah. And then uh, the acanthus plant, we have an oak leaf acanthus listed up here, and we that's part of our tropical shade container planting that we made a video about. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, if you want to look for that. That's a uh, large, large, beautiful very plant. Very beautiful plant. And then uh, there's the polka dot plant. 
Yeah, I really am curious about that polka dot plant. I know that's more of an indoor plant probably most of the year, mm -hmm. especially in our climate. But if you look at the planter, the light pink one that's just to the right of that list, um, there's a pink and green polka dot plant in mm -hmm. that in that little container. Mm -hmm. There's also a caladium. Oh yeah. Yep. So I like that I like that grouping right there. It's pretty. And of course, sweet potato vine. And sweet potato vine. Yeah, we just showed you that. So yeah, and these are just some examples. There's a lot more plants out there. So, oh, there's so many. definitely yeah. do some do some research if these aren't fitting the bill for you. Um, uh, if these aren't interesting, and uh, there's a lot of plants to choose from. Oh, that's so, so fun. So yeah. that's just foliage. Just the foliage. We're gonna move on to the flowering. So guys, yeah, now. flowering. So you know, we all want more color in our shade gardens, and if you don't want foliage, you actually want something to flower. There's so many options. And you know, we we tried to keep our list mostly to summer bloomers, right? Yeah, we did because of the timing right now yeah. for this video. But there's there's a lot there's of a lot of spring. Yeah, a lot of shade loving, um, spring flowering uh, container plants that you Actually, can put out there. So that's pretty cool. There might be a couple on this list now that I think about it. But mm -hmm. yeah, there, there could are be. always so much more, so many more. Yeah, but I mean, from the list, we'll just read the list here. Ajuga, of course, you know, ajuga yeah, reptans, you know, beautiful weed, um, very versatile plant, but really can thrive in partial or full shade conditions and you know if you think about it you put a, a juga in a pot and you get that trailing of that ajuga out of that pot and down oh that'd be that'd beautiful be really interesting see yeah. we, we grow it here in our landscape and it's it's kind of a semi-invasive a little bit if you don't control it but it definitely is a ground cover that's mm -hmm. kind of just all over and it blooms like what early, mid to late spring yeah of? mid to late spring into it can bloom into um into early Maybe early, early summer, summer. Yeah, but cool. yeah that's yeah true. it's really cool and then we've got a, a fun one yeah, totally. Yeah. And then there's a stilbies. Uh, those are beautiful Love plants, and they're so feathery looking. They're more of a they're more of a perennial. They're definitely a perennial here. Yeah. And um, they, they're kind of a small shrub. They can get a little on the larger side, maybe two and a half, three feet tall. Um, and uh, and their, their width can can vary. But I mean, as a as a container plant itself, once those leaves come out, those feathery leaves come out, and then you see the flower spikes that come up and above those uh the, the leaves oh it's just gorgeous Makes a great back you know oh. back of your planter like just yeah. wow or just and a mono yeah the ferny yeah. leaves oh such yeah. a beautiful beautiful that'd be really fun to put in a container yeah and then uh definitely begonias, begonias. right yep. i mean all on. kinds of begonias yeah yeah uh bleeding heart uh that's a beautiful one but watch out for bleeding heart though um most of the plant parts are can be toxic if ingested so just watch out for that if you have uh, dogs or uh, you're even small children, um, keep an eye oh, on that. So yeah, yeah, that's good to know. Yep, yep. So and who doesn't like fuchsias? Fuchsias. Come on, yep. fuchsias. Fuchsias are so versatile too. Most um, probably most of us think of fuchsias just in a hanging mm. basket or kind of set up on a maybe some type of pedestal that that hangs mm -hmm. over. But there's a lot of fuchsias that actually can go right, right in the ground. They're yep. more upright. Yep. There's hardy fuchsias. Um, yeah. yeah, they can go right into your landscape. Yeah, and they do. Like Al said, they'll grow upright instead of this trailing That's over fun. effect. So yeah, there's there's some uh, options there. Just fun to know. I mean, this is about containers, right? But still, yeah. it's just kind of interesting to know there are lots of options out there. Totally. So I um, let's see. So I mean, definitely impatience. We've already showed you at least mm. one of those, but. Um, those are beautiful. I really Hy love them. Hydrangeas. Hydrangeas. Yeah. Yeah. Hydrangeas will do really well in containers, and um, uh, they can come in a lot of different uh, colors. Uh, like, was it blue, red, white, purple? And I think. I think yeah, pink and violet. There's so many. So yeah. can, consider those for any container plant in partial to full shade. Well, and wouldn't it be like I mean, certain we'll certain varieties of hydrangea would do better in like part shade or? Yeah. Or is it? Yeah, there's there's different ones. I mean, there's there's the panicles, um, there's panicle hydrangeas. Yeah. When we're talking about the flowers. There's the macrophylla, the large leafed hydrangeas, and then there's the microphylla, which are the small leaf uh, hydrangeas. But there's also there's more species of hydrangeas out there, and That's so cool. um, most of them are partial shade. Some of them will do full sun. Some will do full shade. Um, so pick your plants wisely. Yeah. But you know, um, there's a lot of uh, variety out there. Nice. Now, lig ligularia. 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 That's a fun one ah. that I've seen them in white and yellow, and okay. they just, they're, I'm honestly, really... I kind of see it more in the landscape, okay. but I've, it's been, I've seen a couple of container designs. I think I saw one in the Garden Gate magazine oh, that we were okay. looking at. Um, I can't really, I'm not that yeah, familiar with that Yeah, it's like Bottle Rocket, I believe it's known as, so bottle I rocket. wonder if any of you have grown that before. That sounds cool. Or maybe that's just a name from Proving Winners. So that I, cool, I, I take that back, actually. Yeah, okay. But that's yeah. a fun, I mean, that's one to look into. Right on. So. 
Um, lily turf. You might not be familiar with yeah, this, but the species name is Liriope. Liri oh, yeah, Liriope. I've heard of that. Okay, yeah. I didn't know so, lily turf was the same. Yeah, okay. li lily turf, but the species. Some some people will call it um, as a common name, Liriope or Liriope mm -hmm. or. A lyriope. Isn't it amazing how many names I mean, one plant can have? Like everybody's <laughs> talking about the same plant, but it's just said in five different ways. Well, and even even the botanical names, the That's, Latin, can be said differently. And people, you, you'll say it differently to somebody else, and they go, "What plant is that? I don't even know what you're talking about." And we're supposed to be able to talk about this with the Latin names, <laughs> so everybody knows about it. it's the same plant, right? right? But even that can be confusing. So, but hmm. that's a beautiful one. That's more of a bulb. Um, that's a beautiful one. Uh, there's also phlox, partial shade, yeah, that's... beautiful plants. Um, and then definitely primrose. Um, primrose, you know, th those are great for uh, a lot of, they grew, they basically evolved as understory plants in forests. A lot of them did. And this is the primulus, the vulgaris. And um, we have them all throughout our yard. They thrive here. They love it. And sometimes we get them to flower at all different kinds of the year, not just in the spring or even into the uh, you know mid late winter, but they'll flower. I mean, we have some flowering right now still, mm -hmm. and some are getting ready to flower. They're setting their flower buds. So beautiful plant though for container plants uh, in the shade. So definitely some flowering plants to think about there. So um, I'm gonna move on here to sensory. Sorry, I'm just jumping in the chat really quick. I know I'm start kind of missing some things here in the chat, oh. you guys. So. I know, Rhonda, you had a question a while ago about swamp milkweed, and we're going to get back to that. Swamp milkweed? Swamp milkweed Interesting. and its, its invasiveness. Oh, okay. So we'll talk about that in just a little bit after our presentation. Okay. There's a question, um, Jennifer Tennyson. Good morning. Thank you morning, for Jennifer. joining us. Um, Jennifer said she found us while looking for, about um, into videos. She found us last night, it sounds like. Oh, cool. After looking into videos oh. for deadheading her fuchsia. Oh, so sweet. we hope that was helpful. Yeah, and totally. she has a couple shade uh, related questions. So we'll um, oh, we'll get back okay. to her in just a sec totally. as well. Right on. So hope you, thank you guys for uh, chiming in. We're not forgetting you. We're just uh, <coughs> we have a lot going on here. So mm, totally want to make sure we get to you guys. But um, yeah, let's just keep going here and then Rock we'll do the roll. questions. OK, so shade lighting container plants, sensory plants. Now, this yeah. is a cool one. Now, when you think of of container plants in the shade, Probably don't think about sensory plants and we covered sensory plants as a topic last, last week, week yep. and that was a fun fun video for us not only to research and get together but also to talk to you guys about because there's so many options for sensory plants and in a general sense plants are just in general sensory anyway right mm -hmm. I mean you walk out there you're automatically engaging your sense of sight and um, and hearing and even touch so um, but there's there's specific ways to make that really intentional out in your garden for to get those the five senses to activate those five senses and so here we wanted to talk to you about shade loving sensory types of plants and containers well it's cool to think about um for some of you with smaller space gardens you know and maybe mm -hmm. just having one container in the shade with mm -hmm. all the different senses like Mm -hmm. represented. Yep. Wouldn't that be cool? Yep. All five senses. Or maybe you just have one sense that you're really focused on. Like you just, you're, you're really tuned into the, um, the smell, you know, you yep. want things that are really aromatic. Mm -hmm. So you're, you have a shade container that's full of like herbs or other aromatic shade plants. Yeah. And maybe, that's so fun. Yeah. It's really cool. And maybe you want to have something of a sensory garden and container plant out in the shade just for that sense of smell, but also for touch. And maybe that's part yeah, of how you cool. relax, you know, maybe you use that in your relaxation um uh what, whatever your ritual might be whatever whatever type of system you might have to do that you can go out and just touch the plants and then smell your fingers or go up and smell the plant right away it's fun that's cool i so, know there's so I many know. options i know we see we kind of get excited get, about it sorry off, you know. tangent you know um, we do so let's see sensories for smell and taste here are some examples for smell and taste of plants that like the shade that can be grown in containers rosemary mint oregano isn't that cool so basically your herbs right yeah right i mean so you're getting a sensory you're getting a sensory out of that for smell and taste but also you can use them for cooking i know if you want so to cool yeah and other things too there's just not only cooking well and keep in mind i mean this is kind of again we're talking about shade but um, plants like rosemary that will flower would do better in like a full sun environment so yeah. if you're waiting for it to flower it might not flower as at much. all or as much as much yeah just kind so, of and that's okay just something to be aware of. Yeah, that, just yeah, make sure you're aware of that. Totally. Good point, honey. Yeah. Uh, sound, balloon flower. Now, before coming up with this presentation and, and uh, researching over this, we weren't that familiar with Not balloon familiar. flower. I've maybe seen it once, but it looks like Campanula to me a little yes. bit. Yes, yes, it, it does. And so it's it's the sound 
Uh, it goes into the sound sensory category because cool. when the flower goes to seed and it develops those seed pods, it creates a sound when you go up and you can pop, you can squeeze and pop those seed pods and it makes a sound. It's really cool. It makes a popping sound. And so for therefore, you could have this plant in your garden, in the container, in the shade for the sound that you can make uh, when going and handling it. That's pretty cool. That's so cool. This yeah. reminds me of Kim, um, Kim Matlock in our, in our audience. And wasn't it last week when we talked about sensory plants? I think it was Kim that was mentioning. Hmm. There's, I think it was, it wasn't poppies. It was a different plant that, um, that her and her granddaughter go and pop. And her granddaughter oh, likes to yeah, pop. yeah, I remember I, that. I'm yeah. forgetting what it That's was, so but cool. I, I don't think it was a shade plant. So, oh. Kim, if you're hearing this and you remember, or you, this makes sense, let us know what that plant was again that yeah. you um, you suggested. I'm for, I forget. I know, I forget too. It was some, yeah, but, okay. but, it's, but yeah, hopefully We'd Kim, you can, you can help us out there. <laughs> um, so again, so for sight, uh, the sensory of sight, uh, definitely caladiums oh. and hostas, right? I mean... We've got uh, the caladium up there on the screen, mm, love that caladiums. lower right-hand uh, picture. I mean, can you imagine the sight of seeing that uh, out in your garden in a shade uh, environment, a container? Um, it, that'd be just beautiful to walk out and greet every I day or greet that. you every day. I love actually that fern, and mm. I don't. We don't know exactly which fern that is, but um, any fern that has you know characteristic fern look and shape and color. Mm. With that caladium, I think that's sight right there. Yeah, that, that could be a western. Wouldn't that be beautiful? That could be a western sword fern. Um, that could be. There's a couple different that's kinds so of ferns. That be, yeah, wow. and they, there's Love a that. lot of ferns that thrive in the shade or part shade too. Mm. Kim chimed in. She oh, said it, it's, it was impatience that ah, they pop, and impatience. it is obviously okay. a shade plant. So totally. that's cool. That fits our list. Yay! Yay! So we cool. can add impatience to our sound. Totally. Yeah. Thanks, Kim. Yay! Thanks for letting us know that. Reminding us. That's um, fun. I want to try that. And then touch. Definitely for that sensory of touch in the shade fern or grasses, right? I mean, just, you can go up and just feel yeah. those leaves and it just has this very distinct, unique feel to it. And that's so awesome. That's so awesome. So yep. you could think of, yeah, again, like combining all of these into one container in the shade and then, yep. yeah, it's just your little sensory container. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it has, and you could, it's, it's a discussion piece. When you, if you have company over, you're going to be like, oh, and here you go through all the senses. Yeah. So that's kind of a fun. It's really cool. Fun yeah. Follow up to last week, right? Totally, totally. Speaking, and, oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. I just thought of something. Speaking of last week, we, last um, week. the very end of our presentation last week, we gave you that little challenge where you go out into the garden and you do five things that you can oh, yeah. see, or four things, three things, mm -hmm. two things. We were wondering if any of you um, tried oh, that. Oh, yeah, good question. So yeah. just for fun. Totally. Yeah. And I, I just wanted to mention real quick, the balloon flower, it's actually up here on the screen. It's that lower left-hand uh, picture right there. That's a balloon flower. That's what it looks That's like cool. in the plant. So. Again, it reminds me of a campanula, know, like the too. larger campanula mm -hmm. that we have. Yeah, me too. So, so yeah, moving cool. on. Okay. We've got what's, Next oh, up, herbs. Herbs. So this is kind of a herb is the word. carryover from the sensory mm -hmm. kind of um, definitely sensory uh, category. Sorry. Definitely. So we've got a lot of options for herbs, and these are all herbs that can grow very successfully in the shade. Mm -hmm. Pretty much all of these were growing in the shade, except we're not growing pineapple sage this year. Yep, not this year. But, you know, a lot of these you can grow together in the yeah, same definitely. pot because they have a lot of the same needs. Now, uh, like rosemary, like the sage, um, they do like a little bit drier conditions. So there's a little bit more drought kind of thinking in that they like those drier conditions not to be wet all the time because they, that can lead to different situations for them, bad situations. Yeah, and But a lot of these other plants, but you, you could put the rosemary and sage possibly in the same container um, that would be a good fit or other That's plants cool. that like that too. But yeah, a lot of these plants, the other plants in here, you could put together cause they have a lot of the same water needs and then definitely part shade, um, shade needs there too. So, I mean, a lot of options and to put all these together in one pot, that just really simplifies oh, things. It, it could. Talk about just a whole so, sensory container yeah. full of herbs. Yeah. Totally cool. So really, really cool. So I think that's pretty much it. I think for that's it. The shade loving parts of things. So let's um, um, let's yeah. jump back to this question because it's relevant to our presentation. And then again, Rhonda, we'll get to your question in just a sec. Um, Jenny, Jennifer, sorry, Tennyson asked, um, any suggestions for an area on the north side of my house that is shaded all day? So we're talking about landscape plants, right? Mm -hmm. For the north side of her house, she's looking for shade plants. Um, it's all day shade. All day shade. I say let's go back to one of our. Um, yeah, we can trying to think um it also depends jennifer too on your zoning so yeah. um, if you're looking for perennials or annuals um check out definitely uh know your zone there us usda zone if you know that 
um, already. That's cool. That's that's a great start to finding that out. So let's say we don't know again what your zone is, but um, if you're looking for perennials because you want to fill it in with an, you know just things that come back every year, mm -hmm. look at hostas. Yep. Look at fuchsias. There's some upright growing fuchsias that we were ta mentioning earlier that oh, yeah. that have a pretty. I can't remember the range of our our hardy fuchsia, but. Definitely research that. Yeah, right? totally. Yeah, and uh, also from our list, and just thinking here, uh, definitely the astilbes um, Ooh, yeah. and uh, the ajuga, um, the bugleweed. That would be a great ground cover out in front if you're if you're looking to tear up um, from the smallest to uh, larger plants yeah. or intermix them and have that around. Um, yeah, and the astilbes that would give you some height like and that. also okay. some some color with the flowers. Um, I don't, um, yeah. So sorry to interrupt. Um, Jennifer said she's in nine B. I can't remember. I don't know if a still B is. It's more of a cooler. We have I think a cheat we sheet. We have a cheat because <laughs> we can't remember every single detail of everything. <laughs> a still but B. A still B might only be zones three zones to eight. Three to eight. Now so that's probably not going to work. Now, yeah. now this is um, this is a still B. This is the specific species. A still B, simplicifolia. So that's a so specific. That's a very specific a still B. Now there okay. could be there there probably are still B that will grow. Um, in your area, it's just maybe not the specific species that we have written here. Well, that's a fun one. But yeah, yeah so and definitely, um, let's see, uh, Liriope, Liriope, um, the lily turf. We got the zones here, six to ten. So that will grow in your area. Interesting. Yeah. So, yeah, so, I'm not super familiar with that. Yeah. So I mean, you do have a lot of options. You do have there. options. Yep. Like, and if you're, it depends on if you're wanting like an evergreens. You know, things like hookahs would be a good example of mm -hmm. something that would be evergreen. Mm -hmm. Probably in ninety. All year, you know. Oh, we have that here. Yeah, I think we have that, and those do bloom, so that's fun. Um, and then hostas obviously are are gonna not be evergreen, but they'll come up and be, you know, just beautiful in the summer. Hucura so, on here, the paniculate. Coral bells. Um, four to eight. Yeah, four to eight. Okay. So four to eight. Well, that so, might not be the best but option, that's, but but that's the hucura americana. Yeah, that's now, a specific. There's other hucuras out there, so again, look for a different species, not the americana specifically, but maybe a different species will be zoned for your area. And you might be able to get away for, with some, you know, impatience and begonias, different types of oh, begonias yeah. that would grow very successfully. Oh yeah. So do, yeah, there's a, you have a mm -hmm. lot of options, right? Really a lot of options for that. Um, yeah, yeah, and that's a, that's a fun challenge that because full fun. shade on the north side in 9B, that's fun. Because it's almost cool. like probably a dry shade, right? Mm -hmm. It could be depending on the weather patterns and how close the, the bed is to the, to the building oh, and point. any overhang or um, what do they call that uh, rain shadow where the rain and any moisture doesn't hit a part of that bed because of the overhang and the how the how everything's situated around the building yeah the house. that's fun so anyway so yeah you so know we we're love going off yeah. again tangent jennifer we hope um, that was a little bit or helpful for you and just kind of thinking of some ideas to bounce off of fun. um yeah i don't know let you can always email us if you want to yes. run some ideas by us totally sean and allison at spokengarden.com oh, totally so thank you awesome. for asking your question, mm -hmm. and we really we wish you good luck. That's yeah, fun. that's fun. Good Let's stuff. get back to the swamp mead, uh, swamp mead, swamp <laughs> milkweed question. <laughs> and to be honest, I don't remember the exact question. I got to scan back here. I believe okay. it was about the invasive. What should I? In swamp milkweed, swamp I'm milkweed. not that familiar with it. It's a milkweed, um, right? It's a milkweed, I mean, it's... but um, there's oh different gosh, kinds of milkweeds out there, and. I don't know if it's a true milkweed or or not. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. So I, uh, Rhonda planted swamp milkweed and wondering if she needs to worry about them taking over my yard. I have read that they are slightly invasive, um, but it depends on maybe the zone. Mm -hmm. um, Rhonda says, I really want to help the monarch butterflies. Oh, cool. That's you know, awesome. Couldn't you just, I mean, okay, so it says you planted them already. I was thinking like if you're worried about invasiveness, put them in containers possible but yeah. you've already planted them so but it depends on what part is invasive to how oh, what, that's what's a good call. what's the mode of invasiveness basically is it underground runners of roots um, does it uh, does it can it create its own like ivy if you cut it off and leave the cut part on the ground will it grow a new plant is it the seeds um, you know how is it invasive and so keep that in mind and uh, if you don't know do some research on it and find that out so then if you do run into a case where it is becoming invasive you can then control it a lot easier yeah so, i think that's a really good start because without yeah. knowing maybe a little more info about yeah, that i'm not familiar with that plant at all oh, but no. i mean yeah just just look at the plant's biology overall and find out what its life cycle is like 
and then also talk to, if you really want to find out really quick, talk to email or call your local extension agency. They are super great resources in your county for uh, questions like this specifically. So um, yeah, check them out. I know. That's a good, good point. So other than that, right, I think that's it for shade plants. I mean, we I could go so. on and on. Um, there's so many amazing resources out there. We used a lot of proven winners kind of recipes and different things. Um, if you want to see any of the plants that we've shown or any of the containers we've shown on here, um, just go to provenwinners.com and there's really no way to search for the recipes specifically. So mm -hmm. look for the plants. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for begonias, you know, check all the begonias out and they have, they offer some recipes and different things for the plants, but you have yep. to go all the way to the bottom of the, of the plant. Mm -hmm. oh, definitely. So there are options or just Google it. There's resources out there. HGTV has a lot of um, different resources. Yep. Make sure to vet the resources. Yeah, totally. Make sure you're aware of who's giving you the information and if you trust them or not. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, but cool. All good stuff, you guys. So I guess um, with that, hopefully that was entertaining. Hopefully you got some good ideas. It generated some some thoughts for you guys if this is something you're thinking about, designing uh, containers and shade areas and the plants you can use to do that. We hope that was helpful. Definitely. So, yeah, you guys. So now moving on. Moving on. I know a couple people have popped Excuse in the me. chat and let oh. us know that they had to run and thank you. And so um, to all of you that are maybe... I have to go because we are, you know, a little bit over our hour mark here, yeah. as always. But um, we hope you have a great week. But we're not done yet. We not have a couple yet. more things to go over. So hopefully you're able to stick around a little bit longer. But wait, there's more. There's, there's ah. always more. Okay. I know. So, audience, oh, what Sherry. is Oh, Sherry. I don't know if Sherry was able to join us this morning. But Sherry, if you're watching this on the replay, um, thank you for sending us this photo of your beautiful lilies. Oh, yeah. There they are. Oh, look at those. Thank you, Sherry. And Sherry was really excited because this yep. was her first year, I believe, growing lilies. Yep. And she's doing a great job, obviously, them. right? I, I mean, that looks beautiful. Oh, it's so exciting. And, and she's got, you can see some Dusty Miller I know, in I've there noticed that too. on the right of it. And also, it looks like there might be, there might be, um, uh, what do you call it? No, that's not. I was going to say that's a, a flowering um, allium, but no, I don't think that's it on the left side there. Sure. It's something yeah, I else. See but something there. There's a right. lot of beautiful plants in there. And so, Sherry, you're doing a great you're job. You're doing a great job. And, Sherry, yep. I'm noticing right away the um, the gazing ball you have in the background oh, because oh, Sean yeah. and I are looking for one because I <laughs> broke ours by accident. It you know, when you're walking around the yard, if you have, you know, I just happened to move our hose and I was trying to unkink it. So I like flicked it up in the air and lo and behold, it knocked over this little garden art thing we have. I was so devastated. That was my grandpa's, and it was just this cute little frog holding this green gazing ball. It happens. Oh, things, but things happen. It's a weird. I'm finding online that it's a weird size to refill. Like it's yeah. it's hard to find. So I I noticed that right away, and I love that color. Yeah, that's really so, cool. Your your whole setup, Sherry, is is beautiful. Yeah, I really so, like that. Yeah. Really so great thank job. you for sending that. Yeah, thank for, you. And for the rest of you, um, we love seeing your photos. Please send us any photos of plants or your garden or different yeah. containers you've created. Definitely, we want to show you. Yeah. We want to show and uh, we want to showcase your garden to everybody else out there. And so, if you want to do that too, uh, send us your photos of your garden. Um, you know, flowers, landscapes. Know. You know, different different projects you're doing. We love seeing all of it. So, yeah, send them to us at Sean and Allison at SpokenGarden.com. We can't wait to see them. We can't wait. Yeah, so just definitely attach those. You can also yeah. um, tag us on social media. Oh, yeah, yeah. Totally. And let us know. Uh, maybe we'll, we might DM you and just double check if it's okay to share those. But totally. Um, yeah. yeah. Totally. We're excited. Send us your photos. Yeah. Okay. What do we have growing in our yard? What's this week? Growing there's a lot. In and our like yard, you guys, there's yeah. probably, there's way more than there six we things growing. But we were trying to focus on some of our part shade to shade, or mm -hmm. there might be a couple sun, sun, uh, full sun growers here. Well, that's okay. So yeah. we have okay. So this week um, we we filmed a video again about afternoon sun plants, and the first two plants you see on the top of that um, row are two of them that we planted. Sorry, can't talk. So we have a rustic orange coleus. Yep. Upper left hand corner. I was really really drawn to that plant because it just has so many colors in it. Yeah, there's just so much going on, and it's got that coppery look to it, yeah. but then it's also got that almost almost burnt look too of uh, those those smaller leaves as you come in close and then there's that there's that burgundy almost color at the very center of all those leaves those two leaves coming out to the side just gorgeous which was kind of the, the selling point for me because if you look to the right of that you'll see the african daisies there those are um did we bring that tag up here oh 
Those are called 4D Harvest Moon osteospermums. Um, they have multiple colors, as you can see. Yeah. And we actually put those together in the landscape with that coleus. Mm -hmm. So all those colors just kind of blend and kind of pull out mm -hmm. the other colors. So yep, looking great, you I guys. Like that. And then also, fun. yeah, to the um, to the very right on the top row, we've got another coleus, but just a little bit different. And um, I don't remember the specific name here. Like we're going to get the tag out of here because there's so many plants and know, so little time so to things. to uh, to memorize these. This is called French Quarter, and beautiful shade loving plant. Um, yeah, we just, we can't wait to see that grow even more. And that's no. the one you guys saw in this container, the shade loving container that we brought up with the, uh, that's also planted with the impatient and then also with the uh, potato vine. Yeah. I love all those colors together. Yeah. And then, uh, lower, uh, lower ring there, lower level there on the left. We got our course fuchsia hanging basket. It's in full bloom right now. It's that's really beautiful. getting going. And then we've got another plant here. These are our begonias in our shade container. Yeah, that's in our tropical shade container. Yeah. That's funky yep. orange and then funky pink, which you can't, I didn't really get a good shot of the pink there. Yeah, you can see a little bit it's of a little bit. There's yeah. some pink there too. Yeah. And then also on the very uh, left there, or sorry, the very right lower hand corner, we've got chiclet orange and that is Esperanza, chiclet orange, beautiful plant. It's got those trumpet shaped I flowers and that shrub. that orange and yellow and it's just beautiful this is one of my new favorite plants that we get to we're lucky enough to add to our garden we have three of these wait yeah. i think we have three yeah, yeah. we have three of these yep, yep. and they um yeah it totally attracts hummingbirds mm -hmm. now i believe these are part shade yep part shade so actually i take that back these are all part sun to full sun or shade yeah. so anyway yeah that's a that's a fun one um yeah you guys just there's always a lot going on in the garden, whether we know it or not, or we uh, we see it or not, or are open to it. But uh, yeah, there's always something going on, right? And especially you guys have probably seen this in your gardens too. So yeah, just you know, get out there today in your gardens, and whether you're just walking around and enjoying everything, or you're doing little projects here and there, get out there. It's a great day to get out there and just do stuff. It is. Yep. I, I, so. I really want to point out this coleus. I know um, a couple of you were admiring this earlier. This is such a beautiful coleus. This is called Main Street Beale Street. This is actually, this was an AAS winner for ornamental plants last, last year, yep. 2020. Yep, yep. So we were lucky enough to grow one. Did we have one or two of these last year? Two. We, we had, had two? We had two of them, yep. So we're going to put these, I think, maybe in our front yard. We have two of these again this year. Yeah. It's they are just, and they're sun or shade coleus, which is really, really awesome because you have, yep. it, like you said, it gives you a lot more design options. Oh, so versatile and such a different color, very unique out in the garden, oh, right? Love that. So, yeah. I really like the way these two coleus look together. Look at that, you guys. Ooh, look at that contrast. So this is a cool. new one that was sent to us this year This to try out. This is Main Street Venice Boulevard. So this Main Street line, I believe, um, this came from Duman Orange, which mm -hmm. is the grower. But um, that they're all sun or shade coleus. Good stuff. That's so cool. Yeah, I know. Excited to put them out in the garden there. Me too. I know. So, Might be doing that this weekend. Yeah. So real quick here, guys, we're going to do a video roundup, let you know what we what we released this week. So um, I think the setting up irrigation in our new raised garden beds that was fun. We that actually was... um, we actually put that together last Sunday, and that was just to give you guys a bird's eye view and show you how to set up a kit, an irrigation kit that we actually bought on Amazon. And uh, it was fun, super simple. We would recommend that kit and some other kits too Definitely. to you guys if you want to set up a type of a quick irrigation system. And so that was a fun video. Then we had our Monday short care tips for fuchsia hanging baskets. We had three quick care tips in under 60 seconds to let you guys know and anybody else out there about how to care for your fuchsia hanging baskets yeah. this summer. Fuchsias are on the mind <clears throat> right now. Oh yeah, they yeah. are. Yeah. And then um, on uh, on. Wednesday, yeah, on Wednesday, adding new plants for afternoon sun. That was where we had all these questions today generated a lot from of that questions. video. That was yeah. awesome. That was a great video. And then on Friday, we had our, our plant chat Friday, and that was the perennial lupin care. That was a fun one to learn more about. Yeah. You know, we've had it in our yard for a couple of years now, and it was I didn't really know as much about it as I did. Yeah, it's always fun to do those because, yeah, you can always learn just, even I just learn a little something new every time we do one of those plant chats, and it, it helps me, it helps you guys. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, it's fun to do. It is fun. Yep, we get to highlight a plant every week. I know, I love learning so, more about those. Yeah, you guys, so yep, that's that's what we did this week. So. I know, that's, we should probably kind of bring this to a close. Yeah. It's been a little, about an hour and a half, so yeah. we're really, really thankful for you guys being with us and joining us today. Thank and you. 
for all of your awesome questions. Yep, and comments. And comments. Yeah, just love having you guys here. We really do. And yep. let's see, next week's topic. Next week's topic. I'm actually forgetting what, because we've moved some things around. So yeah. next week we, uh, what are we talking about next week? I can, I can try and Oh my goodness, here. I've completely forgot. There's so much stuff. Hold on there. But again, coming up in August though, start yes. thinking of some topics that you might want to maybe have us cover for all of us to, to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, some discussion topics that we can make some slides about. So. Yep. I know a couple of you maybe got excited about propagation. I think mm -hmm. I saw that pop up last week as a possible topic. Yeah. So now again, this is gonna be a contest in August. So we're gonna be choosing four winners, one winner each week. Um, mm -hmm. And that'll determine what our topic is that week. So if we choose your topic, you would be the winner. So, yep. Yep. so you can, fun. yeah, you can leave those down below in the comments. You can also email us at Sean and Allison at SpokenGarden.com and let us know what topic you'd like us to, um, to, uh, to cover uh, through the month of, uh, of August. And you don't have to do just one topic. You can give us a range of topics if you want. You can do five different topics. You can do 10, you can do 20. I mean, whatever you need help with, we wanna know so we can then make that video and, um, and, and give you that information. And again, so, we'll formally start this in July, but we're just kind of teasing you right now and just getting a little bug in your head just so you can uh, start thinking about it. Yep, start thinking about definitely. topics, something that comes up in your yard. Something about summer garden care or a certain plant mm -hmm. or, you know, whatever. So yep, Definitely. So the, the live information is almost coming for next week. I know. Week. I am like, So okay. next week it is going to be, if I could. Because nope, we have changed some topics around. So we love letting you know in advance just so you can plan. And maybe if you have any questions in advance of that live, then you can, you know, let us know by emailing us. Water wise oh, tips for summer. There we go. That's next week's. We've got some tools topic. and tips and hacks and all kinds of stuff. So yeah, watering, water wise tips. So yeah, we're all out watering our gardens this summer, right? Yeah, we got to get out there and water. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and uh, just some uh, quick tips for you guys. And uh, we'll also not only tips but supplies and tools and things that you can use. So. I just remembered we're going to do a giveaway next week too. Oh yeah. We thought we yeah. just had the, so we have a giveaway next week, the following week, and then coming up in August again. Yep. yep. We have a so. great giveaway next week too. Yeah, we do. Oh, it's going to be a fun. We, we should just tell them what it is. No, we shouldn't. Yes, we should. It's going to be a tease. We How about tell. let them know it's a watering tool? I, I vote. We tell them right now. Oh, they'll probably so, want to know. I All right. I vote. Okay. Go ahead. Well, it's an extendable watering, um, watering wand from uh, Dramcorp. So this is a telescoping watering wand. Really long one. And so it's the, it's their rain wand, but it telescopes out to, I think like 35 think 30, or 36 32. inches, oh, something like 36? that. Yeah, something wow. like that, 30 something inches. And it's got their, um, it's got the nozzle on the end where you can pick what type of flow of water oh, you want. Awesome tool. Um, and so it's got a nice handle. It's got um, that thumb activation um, on off. So yeah, we're gonna be giving that away. So, so we're gonna we'll come up with our contest kind of um, parameters for next week, but yep. you kind of you do need to be here on the live to win. Yep. So that'll be fun. Yay! I just remembered that. Jeez. Yep. I'm glad you did. I know. Yeah. Gosh, we've so. a lot of a lot of fun things coming up for you yep. guys. So we kind of forget which week's what. Yep. But okay. So with that, um, we'll see you next week. Water wise tips. Um, if yep. you want to be or if you're here, you and you want to enter the contest, that'll be next week. Yep. Please for this, come. For this get, get, awesome get your chance pool. to win your wand. And um, other so. than that, you guys have a great, great week. And yep. we'll see you next Saturday. Yep. Thanks for being here, guys. Thank you, everybody. Have a great weekend. Bye, you guys. Bye.